We're back at PAX Unplugged 2019, and I'm here with... Rick Mines, President of Chaosium. I'm from Massachusetts. Call Cthulhu seems to be our natural theme out there. It's your backyard, no doubt about that. Yeah. You are in Lovecraft country. So, uh, yeah, tell us, I, you put out, we have a lot of Call of Cthulhu stuff. Uh, are, are a lot of your books, like, self-contained adventures? Are they source books? What, what are they? Most of our books will be, like, the Berlin book, this is one of our newest ones. It's a combination, first half of the book is source book on the 1920s and 30s, Weimar Republic, and then the back of the book is a series of scenarios that can be run as a mini campaign or standalone adventures. So you kind of get background and adventures, and this is very typical of most of our recent Call of Cthulhu books. I found it interesting that you picked Berlin. Is there uh, a reason why? I mean, when I think of Berlin, it, I, think of, I think of the wall, I think of Metropolis. Sure. It's, it's closer to Metropolis than it would be the wall, since this is 1920s and 30s, just before the rise of the Third Reich, really. That's really kind of the cutting off point, just about. But, you know, it was such a diverse, rich, culturally accepting society on certain levels, so there's just a little bit of everything in there. And so it's, it's a real melting pot of opportunities to try a wide variety of things, including the mythos. So anyone that wants to really check out your books or, or your modules, uh, where do they start? Where where can they go to like, all right, I want to I want to play this, but I don't know which book to start with. Well, you know, we created the starter set exactly for that, and I had this in front of me just because I thought you might ask something like that. Right? And so the starter set, the, the biggest unique in it is that it has a solo adventure, and so you can try the rules, learn them in the solo on your own without a gaming group, and then you can also pass it on to other players in your gaming group and they can try it on their own. Usually you pass it on to four or five people. You get three or four of them that want to sit down and play a full session, which there are three full scenarios here, about one session each, depending on how chatty you are and how quickly things go. And so it just gives you a great taste of the rules, solo play and group play. Now, what is it about Call of Cthulhu that's become ingrained in, our con in modern mythology? Well, why do you think we, we were so fascinated about this octopus god that wants to end the world? Well, it's a combination of things. I know the literary source is going back to the 1920s, and it has a very wide range of authors that have written for it. And then it also just, you know, the fear of the unknown, things beyond your control, you know, that's, that's part of every generation, but it's also very true in this generation where sometimes people feel things are a little bit more out of their control. Forces beyond, you know, understanding are out there. And, and so people like that a lot. They, 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 they like being scared, they like being uh, you know, thrown into situations they don't fully understand, and then trying to figure some of that out. So you have some new books that you're premiering here, I believe, or just recently well, came out? Along with the Berlin book, another one for our uh, Pulp Cthulhu campaign is uh, Cold Fire Within. Okay. And this is uh, uh, an ongoing campaign. Uh, but, you know, because it's for Pulp Cthulhu, it's a little bit higher, more epic scale. Uh, you're definitely a little bit stronger, a little bit uh, tougher. And some people like that adventure style. I mean, yes, uh, dying and going insane and being scared of that is a feature, not a bug. But some people like it to be more than every other session. They, you know, they want to live a little bit longer. And so the Pulp Cthulhu campaigns usually appeal to that side of the game. Okay. And then uh, not too long ago, we had uh, Terra Australis come out. This is another combination source book where you know it's all about 1920s and 30s Australia, how it all got colonized and everything. So source book and then at the back, campaign of scenarios. One of my personal favorites is Doors to Darkness because especially for beginning keepers, who are just that's what we call our game masters is keepers. Keepers of arcane lore. And so for new keepers, they're sometimes a little bit intimidated about how do I keep it scary, how do I keep it moving? And that's what I like about Doors to Darkness, is we put extra information in the book about how to keep it moving, how to keep it scary, and how to keep your players really engaged so they want to come back to the table again and again. And it's a series of five adventures you can play one night each. So anyone that wants to know more about your books or want to pick something up, where online can they go? Well, the best place to start is at chaosium.com. We have background information on all of our books. We have links to a lot of... Uh, extra materials, like some of these free PDFs and things like that, depending on the item, uh, character sheets and so on, pre-generated characters especially. Uh, so the best place is chaosium.com. But then we also have a lot of wonderful bloggers on YouTube in particular, 
that are happy to have walkthroughs of almost all of our campaigns and material, live play sessions. And if you want to see somebody playing Call of Cthulhu, there's no better place to start than in Critical Role. Just top one million views on YouTube. And so, yeah, Critical Role playing, you know, the Crystal Palace scenario, they had a blast doing it. And it's a great way to see what the game's all about. Well, thank you very much for your time. Always a pleasure. Always enjoy talking about our games and trying to introduce them to new players.